Good God, Ed. You know what day it is today? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, November 15th. 15th. Payroll. Payroll. Did you submit your invoices? Uh, you know what? It's in the ready box. Ready to be sent. <laughs> really? It's right there. So get, well, the getting's good because yeah. I saw your name on the list of payables today. Okay, really? And you know, I know. Can, you know what my Here policy is? Oh, I, I spend what's left. So whatever's left. No, at the no, end of the I'm, day. I'm just trying to be gentle. Okay. Ooh, gentle. Well, I kind of <laughs> like it rough. No, ooh, was that my outside oh. voice? Oh! Hey, did you see the new uh, IPO today, Acreage Holdings? Briefly, yes. There's not a lot of shares outstanding there, is there? There is uh, 20 million, 20 plus million. 22 million, 23 million or something like outstanding. that. Outstanding. Outstanding, but that but, there's a lot more shares out there somewhere. Yeah, there's 21,443,000 outstanding as a result of the IPO. But there's 108.4 million at some point in the future, subordinate voting shares. Is that a little obfuscation, maybe? Well, I've got the listing statement here in front of me, and we're going to dissect it a little later in the show, uh, but we're not going to go there right now. But let me just tell you that this is the embodiment of a new level of something that I've never seen before Bootspot. in capital Bootspot. markets. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Remember the uh, the gambling deal that the uh, the guy from Quebec bought all of the assets? That was pretty egregious, too. This is way, way, way beyond that. Anyways, today we have one hell of a good show. A hell of a good show. Extraordinarily good. And it's not just because Ed forgot his phone, which means he's going to be, like, yeah. dialed in the whole time. It's because we have some interesting people. We have Duma Winshu joining us from Il de la Magdalena. And if you don't know where Il de la Magdalena is, you need to get yourself in front of a map. Is it give in, you a hint. It's in Canada. Is it in Quebec? No. Or? No. It, no. Oh, it's in... Uh, Je suis dangereux. It's désolé. in New Orleans. Mais non. No? Mais non? Mais non. Anyways. Is that what you use to catch worms? Mais non. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Ha, ha, ha. See, I love it when you don't have your phone. Yeah. So I, then I we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we've got some ask me anything questions from people on the street who happen to recognize us when people say, hey, do you know, James, yeah. you want to ask them anything? Yeah. Apparently there's three people who want to ask us something. We're going to go to them. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with core mining CEO, Adrian Rothwell, who's just acquired a bunch of projects and gone public and... Uh, why do we keep insisting on focusing on the mining industry? Well, because the economy could be falling apart. Could be falling apart before we I, I can't comment on any of these things because I don't have my phone with me. <laughs> Whoa. Are you saying that all of your comments come by a telephone at the, during the show? Someone's prompting me. Don't you know you what? you know that? Ed? Didn't you know that? Do you know, do you know what news is moving markets today? Rrr. Do you know? Rrr. Do you know? I do. Here's is the news that's moving here? markets. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> CanTrust reported record revenue for Q3 2018 in their financial results yesterday and is taking steps to list on the New York Stock Exchange. Net income for the quarter was $421,240 and revenue was $12.6 million. Some of CanTrust's highlights for the quarter include a 61% increase from last year in active patients to more than 50,000. Nine Canadian recreational supply agreements were executed and the first shipment of cannabis oil to Denmark was undertaken. CanTrust is also taking steps to list their shares on the New York Stock Exchange to increase their investor base and expand the business in an international scale. Acreage Holdings, the long-awaited behemoth from the United States, began trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange today under the symbol ACRJ.U. And the shares are trading on the CNX, the uh, Canadian Securities Exchange. Uh, the last IPO price was $25. The company raised $314 million prior to going public. It had a $2.5 billion valuation. M. Jardine Group began trading today on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the ticker MJAR. The company has designed and planned more than 100 facilities and produced and sold more than 100,000 kilograms of cannabis, achieving cultivation costs of $1 per gram and producing 360 grams per square foot per year. 
The company also announced they've entered into a binding LOI to acquire Growforce Holdings, Inc. Following completion of the proposed acquisition, M. Jardine would have 49 facilities operating or under development under, across North America while managing 23 cultivation facilities. Dixie Brands, Inc. announced they've obtained conditional approval for the Canadian Securities Exchange for the listing of the shares that will result from Dixie's completion of a reverse takeover of Academy Exploration Limited. Dixie anticipates that the listing will occur before the end of November 2018 and expects that its shares will trade under the ticker symbol DIXI. Heritage Cannabis Holdings announced their subsidiary and licensed producer, Canicure Corp, has received its updated license in accordance with Health Canada's Cannabis Act and cannabis regulations. This new license authorizes Canicure to sell cannabis to other qualified license holders. Aurora Cannabis has appointed Dr. Jonathan Page as Chief Scientific Officer. Dr. Page is a globally renowned cannabis scientist with 37 peer-reviewed publications who has, was the co-lead of the Canadian team of scientists who first sequenced the cannabis genome. Prior to his appointment, Dr. Page served as CEO of recently acquired Anandia Labs. High Hamptons Holdings Corp. announced the appointment of a new CEO. Gary C. Latham will take control of the company. Additional High Hamptons Board of Directors appointed Tom Baird as Chief Operating Officer to oversee the company's subsidiaries with a focus on revenue generation and profitability. Believe Inc. announced they have developed a water-soluble cannabis-infused powder and sugar products to prepare for the adult recreational cannabis-infused food and beverage market next year. Believe's Hamilton Laboratory is being expanded to make room for methods to formulate cannabis extracts into soluble, flavorless powders, sugar crystals, and syrups for use in beverages and food products using stability-enhancing techniques for prolonged shelf life. The Green Organic Dutchman today announced a supply partnership with Velvet Management for sales and distribution to provincial liquor and cannabis boards across Canada. Velvet is a new company with distinct ownership created by the largest wine distributor in Canada, Philippe Dandrade Wines. Oh, I made a dog's breakfast of that. Let's try that again. Philippe Dandrand Wines. Huh. Ontario established strict regulations for the licensing and operation of private cannabis stores in order to protect children and combat the illegal market. There will be a requirement for all private recreational cannabis retail storefronts to be standalone stores only. Cannabis retailers in Ontario will be allowed to operate up to 75 stores each, but the industry is still waiting to see whether companies owned in part by licensed growers can open more than one. Because we have a plan, James. A plan? A what plan. kind of a plan? I don't it's know It's a long-term plan. plan. You got a plan? Here's my, my plan. I'm selling. I met with my insurance agent and he Your told me... Your insurgent agent? My doctor. ISIS? Doctor. ISIS? Doctor. ISIS all day long? Oh, gosh. You know what I bought today? I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Oh my goodness, Ed, that's an old one. I know, but effective. Anyways. Anyways, uh, yeah, right. 308 right. here. So we came back from the news. Look at that. Um, okay, I'm going to pull up a intraday chart here of acreage holdings. And we're going to talk a bit about acreage holdings here, Edward. And the reason we're going to... ACRG.U? ACRG. Dot you. So there's a few things about How this. How did I know that, James? I told you. How, no, you never told me. I did? I told I've you. I've been screaming it. No, what are you talking about? I've had it up on my Jesus. screen all day. Jesus. Anyways, so the company is trading at a 20% discount to the IPO price of $25 a share. Uh, that should be your first indication that, oh, maybe we put a little bit too much stock out there at too high a price. Especially, well, wouldn't the bankers try to coach you on that? Like, wouldn't the bankers say, hey, I think we're trying to be a little piggish I here? I think the bankers were probably late to the party on this because in the 468 page listing statement that has been filed under the name of, uh, it's been filed under the name of Hill Street. It took me forever to find it. There was nothing on CDAR under wow. Anchorage Holdings. And I wow. thought, how can this company go public without filing regulatory documents? So I went to the CSE website, and sure enough, there is their listing statement. I thought, geez, this can't be right. How can it be on the CSE website and not on CDAR? All companies have to file on CDAR. Well, 
Well, would you like to know the answer why, Ed? Huh? <laughs> would you like to know? Yeah. You yeah. know I'm going to tell you. You think you know I'm going to tell, tell you. Tell me. ACRG dot U is the symbol. Yeah. Well, so there's your first hint that something's not quite normal here. There's 20 and a units, quarter? The units have listed. So... Units? The units. So is, if you go to the CSE.ca yeah. and you punch in the symbol ACRG.U, it'll take you to a page that has the symbol reiterated. You click on the symbol and then you go down, scroll down to the page and on the right, and cutting to my uh, NDI now, any second. We're going to start again here because I just assumed that was being NDI'd. Okay. So here's the, you'll see I'm going to the CSE.ca. This is, this is going to be a good exercise for future reference. Anybody wants to find out. Right, right. So the sunk company symbol is ACRG.U. So dot .U means it's not a, uh, it's a U.S. dollar denominated security. Is that what that means, Ed? Yeah. Is that what it means? Multi-state owner of Canada. Well, I'm not sure. It could be unit. I think unit be would unit. be UN. I think. Yeah, you're okay. right. So it's U.S. It's denominated in U.S. dollars. Ding, 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 that ding, was ding, what ding, I, ding, I thought, but you went on some wild tangent. Maybe it's not, though. We don't know yet. Here's the hey, point. You know what? This is the first you know day what? trading. This is the first hey, day James. we found the regulatory statement. You know what? What? Anyway, so here That's it is. What? ACRG.U. Click on that symbol. Takes you to the page on the CSE. Uh, Scroll down to the right here. CSE filings. Forms listing agreement, oh. listing summary, listing statement. Now... If you're considering a long-term investment in this company, you really owe it to yourself to read all of these documents. But in that, we are not considering a long-term investment because we had the chance to be last in and we elected oh. to be not in. You, you got to reason... wonder if these companies have any shame. I mean, like... Well, so here's the thing. They, had, they announced a $250 million or $200 million capital raise IPO round at $22.50 a share. Apparently... They had a billion dollars in interest, according to the scuttlebutt on the street. And so they decided that they're going to raise the price to $25 a share and bump the raise yeah, yeah, to, I thought yeah. it was going to be $550. Yeah. They closed on $317 million at $25 a share. Ooh. Oh, and now, it like, trades down for a to $20. Say it ain't so. It's so. Say it ain't so. It is so. Are you telling me? So see, you can't see my mouse here because for some reason... Oh, your mouse is hiding. Well, this silly NDI thing, uh -huh. you can't see it. But I'm clicking on the 2A listing statement down there. And here we have the listing statement. But I'm going to go back I to think the names because a Because that opens the you know, statement in a browser, which you don't want. You want to go option, click on form 2A listing statement. And that downloads are you, the PDF to your computer. Are you practicing? And now... <laughs> for your next... Next career move. <laughs> I don't know what you're finding so funny, Edward. It's okay, hilarious. So, oh. very interestingly enough, what the hell is with this? I really hate Apple products, but only slightly less than I hate Microsoft products. Which products do you hate the most? Uh, I hate all of them. Is there is there a uh, limit to the, the, the vitriol to the vehemence that you have no. for these companies? Not when it's screwing up like this. Okay, anyway, so let's talk about the trading. It's trading at $20.50. Big whoop, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say this. To the, this is a serious comment. <laughs> when you come out at $25, you raise a pile of money in a market that's had a bit of a rough ride. You know what? Maybe just temper your enthusiasm for, this, for the sector until you see some stability. Just say it. Okay. Next. All right, we're getting there, Ed. We're getting there. As soon as this, let's see, this stupid thing. I've got a force quit Chrome. Yeah. Comes another piece of junk. Yeah. Why don't we put up a chart of the S and P? Let's put up a chart of the S and P. Oh, that's everything. That's, Ed. That's, we're that's, on acreage farms. Acreage I know, farms. I know, but there's, <laughs> I don't see any farms. I know. Well, don't worry. We're going to okay. get there. I know, but in we... the meantime, filler. I'm talking filler. Oh well. P H I L. Yeah. yeah. L -E -R. Okay, you talk. You fill, and I am going to. Uh, I'm going to keep working on getting my machine working the way I need it to here. And one day, theoretically. Well, I'm going to put up the. I'm putting up the. Uh... That's it. Why don't you get yourself a chart organized there, Ed? Yeah. I. I. You know what? I don't think anybody can hear me in the control room. They can. They hear everything they? we say. Oh yeah. No. Yep. 
No. Jeepers, creepers. I wouldn't okay. mind seeing a... Force quit mail. Force quit. Won't force quit. Force quit. Oh boy, technical difficulties here. Can you know we get what? up a, a, a one month chart of the S&P 500? SPX. I, I'm having a little... I'm a little... Okay, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to shut down the whole machine. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, Ed, as I was saying, I want to look okay, at the on the acreage farms, acreage holdings here. I know there's there's a lot of lot of uh, well, let's holes start, in this deal, isn't let's there? Let's start with this uh, former sales page eighty seven. No, sorry, page one hundred according to the numbering of the document. But if you did it on a uh, in the PDF, it's pa actually page one hundred seven. Former sales, prior sales. So these are the sales of the stock that occurred before the IPO round. I want to draw your attention to line one. Class A subordinate voting shares, 750,000 were sold at a price of five cents. Did I just say five cents? <laughs> what date? Oh, October 5th, 2018. Was that a month and a half ago? Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you, you can't be saying that. I gotta that, be joking. That's preposterous. It, I must be full of shit. Except for the wait fact that it's on a list of it. Are you wait. sure your eyes aren't brown? But wait, are there's you more. No brown, no brown. That's this pretty is the, brown to me. This you know, is I the, think you're full of shit. But on October 15, 2018, for a cash consideration of a uh, grand total of two, or no, sorry. So, so they bought them for a nickel. And what do they, what do they sell to the no, public no, no. for? Ten days later, they issued another 2.3 million shares at six cents, Ed. At six cents. See, they bumped it up 20%? Well, never mind that. Then they settled a convertible de convertible debenture for $115,000. I can guarantee you that money was lent to the company, probably by somebody very close to them, at a nickel a share. For another 2.3 million shares out. So, so far, we're Holy at 4.65 point... Yeah. All to the same. Over 5 million shares out with an average cost basis of 5 to 6 cents. And now it's trading at 20, so that's 100. $25. That's 100 million. So for the guys who bought this stock, they're looking at a, what is that? 5,000, 40,000% win in yeah. one month. Yeah, it makes you wonder about, our, about this business a bit. Yeah, but <laughs> here's the cool thing I like about this deal, Ed, is no retail investor, except the really, really, really intellectually challenged, would have looked at this financing, this IPO ran at $25 a share and gone, hey, that seems like a deal. That strikes me as a bargain because all they would have had to have done is go to the uh, consolidated financial statement. Who wrote this thing? That was our, I'm not going to mention. It was some institutions that we know and love. We love you, but thank God I dodged a bullet there. Well, um, I'll tell you. Maybe it's too early to say that. Maybe the stock is going to run to 50 bucks, but also maybe pigs are going to start flying. Who knows? Right. Right. Um, maybe it's a. But, anyways, I just want to draw your attention to that section 10.7 of the listing statement. That's just the first line of prior sales I read to you. There are many more lines. The highest price paid was $6.70. And. They settled everything from debt to professional services for shares at six twenty a share. So everybody on the inside is already looking at a win. And if you're buying the stock above six twenty a share, you are their exit strategy. Just saying. So we're going to go in depth on that. Wow. Actually, we're having an interesting conversation tomorrow. So our analyst, hopefully Dimitri Zaitsev, if you're watching Dimitri, we would like your opinion on the listing statement and the quality of the IPO. But one thing that I also want to point out uh -oh, here is uh -oh. that... Sounds like a revelation's coming. Well, I, I didn't print the sheet, but uh, what? CEO Kevin Murphy controls 87% of the votes. Really? What? Did I just say? The guy who got the shares for five cents just paid... What? He's controlling the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. He's got puppies. He's got John Boehner on the board. John Boehner got 640,000 shares, was it? 625,000 shares. Uh, our former Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, now the illustrious head this, this of... Is, this is almost hard to believe. It is. It is. So if you're looking for the most egregious white-collar 
creativity you, you know what, well, at the just, top of the food chain. Are you saying... Look no further than the listing statements on our illustrious capital market our former, here in Canada. Our former Prime Woo! Minister, Brian Mulroney. Brian Mulroney. He's shilling for the, shilling for the weed. Conservative guy, right? I don't recall him being pro marijuana during his days in office. Do you remember that, Ed? Well, in fact, I'm pretty sure if we went back and searched the uh, Google machine, the Wayback machine, we would find some pretty, pretty strong language against he cannabis. Was, he was the prime minister. Yeah. Is he? Is he now saying I was wrong? I I was wrong. And these, he actually, he didn't get 625,000 shares. He only got. And I don't know how upset he's going to be when he hear that John Boehner got 625 and he only got, wait, where is it? Wait for it, wait for it. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. He only got 280,000. What's 280,000 times $25, Ed? Yeah, that's a big chunk of cash. 100 million. 100 million. Well, no, it's not 100 million. It's uh, $24, 25, well, let's say $20, come on, times 2.8. Yeah. Uh, uh, 5.6, 56 million dollars. Okay. Not a bad little... Thank you. Thank you for going on the show and shilling our deal. Anyways, we could go on about acreage and we plan to probably add infinitum because this is another example of a private company trading on a public exchange at the expense of the retail shareholder. This, this so, is really egregious, isn't it? This is the epitome of egregious. This is what the word egregious was designed for. Is it this one? The, the, right. <laughs> Along comes the definition of egregious. I mean, anyways. Anyway. Th anyways. This guy must be a real, you know. I, look, at, I'm not going to be critical because no. I'm, maybe I'm a little jealous. No, I'm jealous. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm not critical. I'm jealous. Let's hey, be clear Hey, we should here. start a show called, a little segment called the Jealousy Twins. The Jealousy Twins, and, and that'll be you and me? Yeah. I don't think anybody would ever mistake us for twins. Unless, of course, I shave it's, my hair It's off. TV. Anything oh. can happen. Oh, that's true. Anything can happen. We could get, come out in gorilla suits. And license. Then, license. Yeah, license. Poetic right. license. Anyways, we had a chat with uh, our good friend Duma Winshu from Province Brands on the Ile de Magdalena from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Here's what he had to say. Hey, welcome back. My guest in this segment is Duma Winshu, CEO of Province Brands. Brands of Canada. Duma, welcome back. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Duma, I'm going to first ask you, why are you bundled up as if it's uh, minus 10 degrees out? Because it, it's about minus 10 degrees out. I'm um, <laughs> uh, in Les Isles de la Madeleine. We had a, a, a severe storm, uh, 110 kilometers per hour, and lost power. So I'm, uh, I'm just trying to stay warm, but I'm honored to be uh, here doing the interview with you. Uh-huh. Well, that's awesome. Um, the reason for our uh, conversation today is uh, Brick Street Brewing announced that they had uh, done a deal with you and we're actually going to be licensing your technology to create a, a line of beer. Is that what's happening? Uh, it, it, it is happening. I, I should correct the uh, pronunciation. It is Brock Street Brewing. Oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, they are a, a, yes, a, a fantastic brewery in Whitby, Ontario, out near Pickering. Uh, and we're thrilled to be working with them. And uh, it's very interesting what we are doing with them. As you probably know, we have developed uh, our own process to brew the, the world's first beers brewed from the cannabis plant. And we have developed this process. Uh, to primarily brew beers that are non-alcoholic and intoxicate using marijuana or its phytocannabinoids. And as we've been developing this process, we've happened to uh, test it in many cases on hemp, uh, which is another type of cannabis. And we just sort of got tired of waiting for legalization to take place uh, here in Canada and for them to allow beverages and edibles like the rest of the world, which has already legalized uh, medical or recreational marijuana, does permit. And so we decided we would launch a marijuana-free uh, beverage that is brewed from cannabis. And this we call Cambridge Bay. Mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it is the world's first beer brewed from cannabis. It'll be available in early next year. It is contains no marijuana. It is brewed from a different type of cannabis. It's brewed from hemp. And uh, what happened was that the folks at Brock Street uh, learned about this, and, um, and we've signed a, a very unusual deal with them, one that uh, would enable us to make a marijuana beer for them under their brand name in our facility uh, when our 123,000 square foot facility in Grimsby, Ontario is complete. But also, they will use our patent-pending technology 
to make a beer from hemp, much like our Cambridge Bay beer that we'll be launching early next year. And they will sell that in their own facility. And never in a million years did we expect as a marijuana company that we would be uh, licensing technology to make a, an alcohol product. But we're, we're thrilled that they find interest in that and, and thrilled to be working with those guys. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. So these two products that you've just described have no intoxicating effects from marijuana. Uh, it has, it has uh, beer and it has alcohol. Correct. We are launching a 7% ABV Imperial Pilsner called Cambridge Bay, yeah. and that will be in the market early next year. Uh, it is made from hemp, and in particular, it is made by mashing and fermenting the stalks, stems, and in some cases, even the roots of the hemp plant. These are food-grade hemp plants, and these are parts of the hemp plant which are not considered a controlled substance in Canada or really anywhere in the world. It's the same parts of the hemp plant that might be used to make a T-shirt or rope uh, in other applications. Uh, but we have developed a way to turn this into really a delicious-tasting beer and make great use of this material. And so uh, when we do this with marijuana instead of hemp, we have to remove the alcohol at the end. But for this product, we don't remove the alcohol. We leave it in the beer. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, we're, for our version, our Cambridge Bay Imperial Pilsner, uh, it has 7%, which is quite a lot of alcohol. And part of the reason we have done that is because when we started this company, we went around and met with everyone, uh, you know, with a ton of master brewers. And they all said to us, you'll never find a way to to get alcohol out of the cannabis plant. There's no carbohydrates, there's nothing you can mash. Uh, and we wanted to prove to all those folks that not only could we get alcohol, but we can get a lot. We got 7%. Mm. Uh, so, so that's really exciting. And then the beer that we're making uh, with Brock Street, you know, we don't know what they're going to do with our technology. <laughs> and that's kind of what's so exciting. Uh, mm. Are they gonna make a stout? Are they gonna make an IPA? Are they gonna make a Pilsner? Uh, their master brewer and our master brewer are already working together uh, to figure out what style and what type of beer they're going to make from uh, cannabis using the technology that we have developed to, to brew beer from cannabis. Mm -hmm. Okay, in, uh, in traditional beer making, there's very little argument against the fact that the flavor comes from, a, from malted, uh, malted barley and hops. Yep. And so I'm yep. curious as to, A, are malted barley and hops part of the Cambridge concoction or part of the Brock Street concoction? And B, is that uh, going to be able to impart the same flavor in such a way that the, the, the flavor experience will be similar to traditional beers? Or is this a whole different flavor experience that we're going to have? It is a slightly different flavor experience. Uh, what makes our technology unique is that we don't need any barley, we don't need any grains, we don't need any rice, we don't need any sugar to, to start with to brew that beer. Hmm. We actually brew the beer starting from plant material, from in fact the stalks, the stems, and the roots uh, of cannabis plant. And we're able to mash and ferment this material to get sugars out of it. And so that's the source of our sugars, which we then ferment in a more traditional process to brew the beer. So well, does it taste like a beer? Of course it does, because we're using, using brewer's yeast. Of course it tastes like a beer because we're using uh, fine organic hops uh, and, and we're fermenting it in a way that beer would be fermented. So you get those esters and those subtle flavors and it, it has a very familiar flavor of a beer, but with a slightly different twist owing to the fact that it is uh, made from cannabis. Uh, whether we make it for hemp or marijuana, the flavor is effectively identical. The difference mm. is that when we make it for marijuana, it would intoxicate you due to the phytocannabinoids uh, that are found in the marijuana plant. When we make it from hemp, it does not contain appreciable amounts of those phytocannabinoids. So instead, uh, we actually uh, you know, leave the alcohol in. We do not perform a dealkalization before that product is sold. Now, the great thing about this technology is you could do anything with it. So the folks at Brock Street, they may choose to mix in some barley if they wanted to. And that's their decision, right? They, they are licensing the technology. They can do whatever they want. Uh, they may choose to mix it with apple cider. I mean, you know, you could do anything uh, with this tech. But what's amazing is that it's a way to take this plant material 
and turn it into a great a great beer. Uh, you know, for our case, we don't include barley because that sort of goes against the ethos of our company. We're really about making a safer and healthier alternative to alcohol. And uh, you know, barley's great, but it contains gluten. A lot of people are gluten intolerant. Even folks who are not gluten intolerant are watching their gluten intake. I'm one of those people. And uh, and and when you make a beer from barley or any type of grains. You're going to have a lot more calories. You're going to have a lot more free sugar than we do. So our Cambridge Bay Imperial Pilsner is about uh, half of the calories of a standard Imperial Pilsner with the same ABV. Uh, and our marijuana products that are brewed from marijuana are about half of the calories of a non-alcoholic beer that would be brewed from barley. Wow. Interesting. So how would you describe the flavor of your cannabis beer? I don't know if you've ever had any of these um, hemp beers that are on the market. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the fastest growing categories of flavored beers around the world. Uh, and the way they make those beers is very different from the way we make ours. Uh, those folks are taking a, a traditional brewing process and they're uh, Towards the end, they're sort of taking some toasted hemp seeds, which have a great flavor. I, I love toasted hemp seeds. In fact, I have them for breakfast almost every morning. Uh, but uh, they, they take these toasted hemp seeds and they so put them in a cheesecloth and they soak them in the boil kettle so that the flavor permeates the beer. So in that case, it's a beer brewed with barley, but flavored with toasted hemp seeds. Now, our beer is made without any grains or barley, so you don't have that sweetness, that sort of bread flavor that you get with a, a, a normal barley beer. Mm -hmm. But you do have a flavor that is very similar to what they get when they soak the toasted hemp seeds into the beer because it's you're boiling cannabis, and when you boil cannabis, you know a lot of the, the, the terpenes and the flavonoids uh, will volatilize. They won't make it through. But whether you're boiling the, the stalks, the stems, the roots, or the seeds, or We've never actually tried with flour, but I assume it would be the same with the flour. When you're boiling it, the, the, the flavonoids that remain have a very similar flavor. Uh, so, so our beer uh, really tastes uh, like a less sweet version of one of these um, uh, hemp beers that you can find on the market. In, in Canada, there's one called uh, Millennium Buzz, which is in just about every uh, LCBO. And in the United States, the big one that's that's caught a big wave recently is called the Hemperer, made by New Belgium. But but there are literally hundreds of, of uh, breweries making hemp beers these days. Yeah, sure. I used to drink a beer called Bowen Island Hemp Ale back in yep. the late 1990s, early 2000s. So it's been around. It's been around. It, it has been a very long time. Yeah, hemp beers okay. have been around for a while, and it's a, it's a flavor that people love. So uh, questioning minds want to know, Duma, when does the, what, is there any sense of when beverages with cannabis intoxication properties in them are going to be allowed in the Canadian market? Well, according to the Cannabis Act, uh, we know that these beverages will be allowed uh, within one year of October 17th, 2018. So that means they could be allowed any day now, but um, we all know how government works. So no one mm -hmm. is expecting them to be legal any even one minute before the last possible moment. Uh, so at Province Brands, we are building uh, right now the world's first cannabis brewery and a 123,000 square foot facility in Grimsby. And we are uh, preparing to have that facility ready uh, to, um, to, to sell beer uh, by October 17th, 2019, which is when we expect uh, beverages, marijuana beverages to be uh, legal here in Canada. Now it could happen before, uh, in which case we, we may not be prepared, but, uh, but you know, we're pretty confident that it won't uh, that they won't allow sale of edibles and beverages uh, sure. before basically the deadline, which is October of 2019. Okay. What about the U.S. opportunity and elsewhere? The U.S. opportunity is tremendous. Uh, we have seen uh, throughout many states in the United States edibles and beverages becoming the top selling products uh, in uh, in certain areas and uh, and certainly the fastest growing category of cannabis products across the United States. Uh, beverages in particular make up about 1% of all sales in dispensaries right now. So they, they are not a, a huge category, but they are in fact the fastest growing category of, of products uh, in, in the United States. For province, it's 
a bit limiting. We are preparing to um, take our company public on the Toronto Stock Exchange, where they do not permit companies to operate in uh, the United States. So we have not done anything uh, to get our products into the United States, but we are looking at other uh, international markets and exploring opportunities in places that may soon legalize edibles and beverages and, uh, and, and may even soon legalize recreational cannabis. Sure. All right, Duma, that's a great update. Thank you very much for your participation. We'll come back to you soon. Oh, yeah. Hopefully I see you in, a, in the warm office in Toronto next time. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate the time, and, uh, and we'll talk soon. You bet. Bye for now, Duma. What's that mean? Well, you're a prince. Prince of what? Paisley. Paisley? I'm the Paisley prince? You're this, prince. Is, is this Paisley? Yeah. I really? Think, yeah. I thought uh, it was... No, no. No, no. It's, uh, it's country fair. Country fair. Yeah. Country fair. You got it. You got wheat. You got strands of wheat. There. Country fair. This ain't no wheat shirt, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, okay. Enough about Acreage Holdings. Okay, okay. Enough about that. Yeah, you I know, know I know. I know. It is death the... squads being sent out tonight. I know. And if I don't uh, show up, we're going to be both be at James' place. The RCMP is going to be giving it to me. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Where did you get your information? Online. Yeah. Listing statement. Um, so let's take a look at, I say it's time, I say, I say, I say, boy, it's time to look at the, um, you know, what do we call those? The uh, indexes, the indexes, the indices. 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 Indices So we've got our polished. indices up here. On, oh, wait, we don't have our NDI up. Faux pas numero uno. <coughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, NDI live. Coming to you live from the front of the room. So look at this. Oh, we want our computers over here. Oh, yeah. yeah right, you know right? what? Don't forget, we've got professional production assistants here now. So we're going to put Can computers here. Can I just throw this paper so out like... No! Please. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Despite all the... You know, you know what? You know what? One of my favorite paintings of all times. Nope. Want to hear about The nope. Scream by Edvard Munch. Edvard Munch. I thought his name was Edward Munch. Munsk? Munsk. Munsk. No esk. No esk. No esk. No esk. How? Anyway, it's a it's a fascinating painting. You know. Okay, so Ed, look at our uh, look at our big indexes here. You got them up in front of you. Please. Here, look at. Here, let me. What? Let me let me help you out here. I'm gonna help you out. These things seem so. Geez, you got a browser on this goddamn thing. Prehistoric, you know. Like, there's got to be a better way to. Fuck. Where the hell? You know, this is what I love about, I mean, this is why I only slightly yeah. hate yeah. my computer slightly less than yours. Uh, okay, like, let's find a, uh, where is, what's it called? It's Explorer? Are they still calling it Explorer? No, that's it's, not what it's, it's called. Explorer. Okay, where's the, uh, where's the browser on this? Would primary? you say that you are a bit of an explorer, James? Type to search. Let's just go for this. MidasLetter.com forward slash yeah. cannabis. Okay. Ah, look, it took you there. Okay. So, Ed, now we're on the same page. Literally, look. Same page. That should be a, that should be a famous quote. It is a, it is a famous quote. I made it no. up. Now we're on the same page. You heard that before? All right. All right. Anyway, you so look at first. these indexes. Yeah. Why well, can't we look at them up over there? Because then people are looking at the back of our heads. We're talking to people over here. Here's your camera. Maybe that's you why they're watching the show. Because they, <laughs> don't they don't have they to want, identify. I don't think they want to see the back of your head, Edward. Anyways, look at Big Cap Index. The back of my head word? Your head word. 5.84% up. Oh, that's a pretty nice bounce. 3.35% up in the case of the small cap cannabis index. Right. That's a nice 4.06 yeah. up in the Venture Index. That's great. And 2.3% up on the CSE Index. You, you seem particularly pleased with today's action. Well, I'm a little bit pleased. The only thing I'm not so pleased about is, see, just like on days when everything collapses, you want to pay attention to the stocks that go up and buck the trend. Just to keep it in the back of your head if you're looking for a trade on a down day. Right. So on an up day, you want to look for the stocks that are not participating in the lift and remind yourself as to why you own those pieces of paper. Papier. Papier. Papier fragrant. And, uh, you know, maybe stay away from those. So, you know, if we go to the... Right. Uh, you know what? I think it would help if I put my glasses on. Okay. So if we go look at the... Uh, 
CSC Can Canadian uh, Cannabis Index page, you'll see that VRTX is, uh, that's down here. Let me help you out there, Edward. <laughs> Watch me. There we go. Go to the page. Oh, yeah. That way we'll be on the same page again. We'll be able to talk. Okay, and then you're going to hit this one up here. And Bob's your uncle. Boom. Look at that. So the big loser of the day on the CSC was? Veritas Pharma. Symbol? <laughs> well, I tried. Anyway. Down 10%, I can tell you that. Yeah, 14 cents. But we don't really care about those. Yeah, you know stuff. what? <sighs> Leviathan Cannabis continuing its losing streak down another. So here's one that didn't participate <sighs> in the losing streak and or in the up in the reversal or the bounce. Let's call it a bounce. It's not really a reversal yet. It's a bounce. Today was a bounce. Yeah. One day after six days of downward momentum, call that a bounce? What's particularly disturbing, what is? all kidding aside, uh -huh. is the debut of this, this uh, new issue. Because I think there's another two what deals. New issue? <laughs> Didn't we the, just have a segment on a company called Acreage? That company is amazing! It's going to be huge! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that's a, that you know symbol's got... already taken. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah. You know, so hey, let's see. Fincana also sucking hind tit here on its way to the basement. 17 cents. That was at one time something I was very enthusiastic about. Not so much anymore. Global cannabis. Look at these are all the ones that. <laughs> uh, look at Micron Waste Technologies. Oh boy. Body and mind. Okay. Body and mind. They had a big rise. A little profit taking we'll call it. But look at that. We got a whole page of red on a day where everything is green. Yeah. Let's What's that going. telling you? It's a red day. You're colorblind. I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing red now, yeah. Edward. You're really pissing me off. <laughs> um, it's not that easy being green. Uh, the, so, yeah, I'm looking for some signs the of light scream. How about the scream? Ah! <laughs> I hope we had compression and gating in the sound room there. So, look at this. The biggest winner of the day. The biggest winner? Heritage Cannabis Holdings. Wait a minute. I think it's time for... Heritage Cannabis Holdings. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> biggest winner on the oh. CSE today. Oh, help Heritage me. Cannabis help Holdings me. up 20, I'm thinking, 25%. I'm thinking of becoming a believer. Um, Whatever you want to tell me, <laughs> I'll believe it all. Anyway, I've resisted too much. Anyway, I, I actually thought I was the only one that was crazy, and now I'm starting to realize that crazy it's not is me. a way of a state of mind, Ed. Uh, so, anyways, New uh. Age Farm also had a, well, these are penny stocks, but whatever. Heritage Farms they had a, the big announcement with Canacure, their subsidiary. Canacure. Anyways, Canacure got a license. What's the symbol? Symbol is C A N N. Okay. Which Makes is a sense, pretty good eh? symbol. Yeah. Can. can uh, nice can. Miss. Nice can. can uh, miss. You would think the first time saying that nice came nice out cans, of the you'd say nice can. <laughs> nice can. Which would be a comment on somebody's ass? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying what <laughs> you I just said. said. Nice not, can. What are you talking what about? What are, you, what are you talking about, my ass? What's the interpretation Jesus here? What's Christ going on? Christ, Edward. What? This used to are be you a rated show. Oh, my God. Jesus. That's disgusting. Hey, Zeus. Jesus Christ. Christ Mount Olympia, what's going on? Or Mount Olympus, I guess oh, it boy. is. Oh, <laughs> boy. Olympia. Herc, Herc. <laughs> now we're in Washington State. But all right. anyways, all right. lots, of, uh, lots of action here. Lots of action all over the place. Lots of action on the board. On the uh, board, no less? Wayland Group, a company we know and love because, not least of which, because they are our client. They are our client because we know and love them. Uh, up, delivered a nice 3.8% uh, win, or gain today, rather. Up $0.05, cents, $1.34. This is stock was at 280 a month ago. Well, what? That's not, I'm not telling you what I to do, Edward. I'm I, telling you what I did. You, know, you know what? Anyway, Speak Easy Cannabis Club, another one that's doing all right. I want this up 10 cents finally. Woohoo! I bought it last week at over seven dollars. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. However, that was amidst the turmoil. Go softly amidst the. How was that thing? Desiderata. Do you remember that thing by the monks, the monkeys? The, <laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> the monkey, the monkey. Wait a minute, now, are you telling me Friar, Friar Tuck is, is, a, is a, in a band? Yeah. <laughs> and the monks. And the monkeys. No, not the monks. Not Doug's and me. 
pocket pin. I don't know what to do with them. That's an old. That's hey. an old classic. And do you remember this? <laughs> Chestnuts. So we're little chestnuts. <laughs> chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Bing, we're take it away, there. Bing. Bing, pay your bets. We're getting there. Place your bets. Place your bets. No, okay, pay man. your bets. You know what? The one thing fucking, we haven't done you, yet. You, Whoa. He's pulling out. They really agree. You, like, you, uh, you are my grandson. You know, what the, you, know what, you know what the word filch means? You're a filcher. You're a filcher. <laughs> You know he's not. That's, I'm just kidding. Well, I, I, you know, I, 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 I was just kidding. I did not. I did not mean that. Well, <laughs> I was joking. Are you? Are you confident? I'm a filter. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't mean there's that. There's filter no, no. and there's filter. Yeah, yeah. A filter is somebody who steals. I got my own problem. What is a filter, Ed? Uh, Ed Care to help me out there? You put on without the, offending anybody. You put on the end of a cigarette to weed it, to get rid of a lot of the particulates. What? A filter. What? Did you say filter? Filter. No, 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 no. Filter. Jimmy Doyle is here all the way from... Jimmy. Hey, let's, all the way let's, from play, let's play... What ask, street is that from? Ask the uh, uh, watcher. Eddie has the giggles today, says Bobby Mullins. Hey, Bobby Mullins, yeah, all the way okay, from, what's okay. he, Yorkville? Dilettante says, no problem. We should call out every single pump and dump. Michael DR, we are going to call out every single pump and dump unless we own it at the entry price, in which case we're going to be... Fraser thinks I can see through glass. Look. I was waiting until you're done. Oh. Yeah. Apparently, Richard Gere. You're trying to interrupt. Richard Gere. We're trying to interrupt our enthusiasm here and trying to get us to stick to the script. So we're going to take a couple of questions from the street now. And the first one is. Wait a sec. I was supposed to have my. Hold on. Here it is. Okay. I'm receiving communications. What are you from doing? The, ow! Don't yell. Jesus, why have I got Ed in my ear here? Okay, questions from the street. Hi guys, I'm Kim. Um, my friend invests in Aurora and she told me to invest in it, but I really don't know anything about the cannabis in industry. Uh, should it be something I should be looking into? So she said that she's invested in, can uh, in Aurora. Yeah, right. And she's uh, wondering if it's something that uh, she should be hanging on to. Or continue investing in it, continue buying. Aurora. Well, let's pull up the chart on Aurora. You know, you know, you, for instance, is, does this person have a big profit in, in, the, in the investment? Um, you know, if, they, if you have a big profit, it might alter your perspective. Yeah. Or if you just got in or if you've been in it and you've got a big profit. If you've got a big profit, take some money off the table. Okay. That's, that's a for sure. You can say that without getting into trouble. Because you'll never get censured for giving advice to somebody to sell. Because nobody says it. Eh? The, the, <laughs> the lizards on base. So three. yeah, here's the bottom line. Here's here's the bottom line. If you uh, if you oh. if you've made some money, try to take some off the table. Conventional wisdom in the institutional grade, in the institutional yeah. class, is always be a seller. Last time I went to the supermarket and I tried to pay with a cert, no can do. They don't no take certs. Do? They take cash. No can do reactor. Cash. cash. No can do reactor. No. <laughs> this is uh <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey Zeus. Anyways, uh, okay. Okay, so yeah. Is it a buy now? We don't know. We're not qualified to make that call. However, given the state of the cannabis market, chances are it'll go up. However, if the cannabis mar market if the cannabis market explodes too fast and there's too many issues, we could be looking at an oversupply now. Usually, when a company like this comes along, that's the sign of the top. Once the level of egregiousness transcends you know, all I'm, prior I'm, I'm, levels, like I mean, that that look, that's fairly uh, in your face when you say yeah, like that's that's pretty in your face. That's blatant. Well, blatant. I, I, no, but hey, maybe it's maybe you know they paid five dollars for those shares. In defense of acreage holdings, if the stock goes to fifty bucks in the next two weeks, are you going to complain? Who's going to complain? You know what? What if it goes to... F I'm going to complain if I'm one of the guys that's holding the stock. Let's take another look at one of these printout pages. How do we get back on acreage? I thought we were going to leave them alone. What the hell's the matter right. with you, Edward? We beat off right. on them up. Right, right, Let's go to AMA number two, shall we? Bam! Hi, my name is Andrew. And uh, my so question here's the here problem. about cannabis stocks is, um, even though we know the larger cannabis companies in the market right now, but what would be the smaller ones that we should keep our eye on? AMA number two. Oh, look, he froze. Oh no. 
Did we just freeze out? Yes. No, this we'll do it again. Here it is again. Hi, my name is Andrew, and uh, my question here about cannabis stocks is, um, even though we know the larger cannabis companies in the market right now, but what would be the smaller ones that we should keep our eye on? Oh, Andrew, I like that kind of a question because that happens Could to you be our little area. So Andrew was asking, you know, everybody knows about the big caps. He's wondering about the small caps. Like, what are the small caps under two bucks a buck that people should be keeping an eye on that might actually become canopy growth one day? Right, right. So... Number one on my list right now is Emblem. Emblem, and the reason Emblem is on my list is because Cam, it's on Cam's list, and he, I remember he made some cogent argument about why it should be on my list. I don't remember what those arguments were, but I remember thinking, screw it, I'm gonna put it on my list too. I'm gonna throw out five names. Okay. Just, just throw them just out there. Five names, whoa, eh? Yeah, yeah. Just five quickly, names. Just quickly, because it may catch it. It may okay. promote some. You can only throw out names that you have no interest in, that are not a client, and right. that is not somebody else. Yeah. Your friends okay. or anything. Okay, like Weed MD. They've been okay. on the show. Weed MD. Yeah. There's one, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Weed MD is uh, a good one. I, I have okay, no whoa, involvement. Whoa, whoa. Let's, before no we, involvement. Before and we go there, what is uh, Weed MD trading at right now? 156. I just took a wild guess. I don't have my phone with me. I just took a wild guess. <laughs> weed, uh, weed is, uh, no, the symbol is WMD. WMD, WMD for you. On uh, the CNX? No, must be on the TSC. Our good friend Keith Herker. Whoops, he's our friend. Okay, tr bid. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, spin it out. <laughs> spin it out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bid 155 to 157. Okay. Weed MD has been around. They've got a good They've bit of traction. They've got assets. they got lots of cash. Yep. Mike, Michael Kraft, the chairman, knows a lot about business. He really does. Yep. Merker's a great guy. Bruce is a great guy. Yep. I don't own any stock. Okay. At, at these prices, it's good. And another good one is Chiron. Okay. Chiron. Chiron was a client. We can't talk about Chiron in that context. Okay, I didn't know they were, we're client. talking to the I public see, and answering a question. You we see, can only you, talk about quest, you companies keep we that, don't own, we have no interest in. The money side and the revenue, you keep that all very secret. <laughs> if this is secret, Ed. <laughs> no, no. Then no. Just I, say, I, I don't know see who your clients are, see. nor do I care. Oh, I no, they say, were a client. Well, Chiron's a good but, company. But we ended up I'll with like some, some shares in the company as a result of the client relationship. Right. And so... Uh, yeah, I think it's a great company to look at, but I'm biased okay. and therefore the, the, not you, to be trusted. Don't say anything then. Let me say. <laughs> Silence. Silence. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. <laughs> Boy, he's getting a little ferocious over there. Bro. Uh, let's take a look at emblem. Cam, what's the emblem symbol again? EMC. EMC. Energy equals mass times the velocity of light squared. It's an Einstein stock. Currently bid at a buck 28 to a buck 29. Right. So Emblem, why do, why like, do we why like, do like Emblem? It? Cam, why do we like Emblem again? It's got distribution products. It's got distribution rec. products, international footprint. Medical rec. Medical, recreational brands. And it's under a 200 million market cap. And it's under a 200 million dollar market cap. Cameron, that's there's, it. There's You're on another the show. one. There's three. How about JWCA? There's another one. Oh, another client. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Come on. Well, oh, that's, but that's a good price. This stock uh, yeah. came I mean, out in a buck so it's, But I'm just saying it meets the criteria. Like I don't, I don't have any clients no, no, here. No, 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 that's, I'm independent. That's true. Well, yeah. not exactly. Yes, I am. More you than are you the think. beneficiary. More than you, you think. You are the beneficiary of these You haven't these convinced clients. me about anything yet. Let's <laughs> just say, have you submitted your invoice yet? Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there you go. You're the beneficiary of Chiron our up 11 cents. We just talked about Chiron. Well, that's why it's up so 11 I wanted cents to mention now, five because you mentioned God. one. I've mentioned three. Three, well, to, okay. three well, to one. I don't think he wanted five. He was looking for one. No, he wanted to know some names in the. Some names. Some names. Some names. Okay, I'm going to throw out there then my, some of my names. Oh, let's see. Heritage. <laughs> well, Heritage. You're, you're Horrible you're structure. It. Horrible structure. What's it trading at? What's it trading at? It's trading at 20 cents. Still. It's up 25 cents on the day. What? It's up 25 cents on the day, or it's up 5 cents on the day, 25%. However, I've got to point out that I have been a seller in the last week. I have been taking You're some generating money off a bit of cash? Yeah, I need to take some cash off the table. <sighs> got to always be a seller, man. Just saying. Anyways, let's see what else. Juju, yeah. also been a seller today. 
Why? Because I bought it at twenty-seven cents. Can we just say cents. another a lock general in my statement loss. here? This is this is to help the viewers. Don't buy when there's lots of excitement. Wait. That's for when I bought it. I shouldn't have bought <laughs> it. Is that what you're saying, Ed? I made money on it I'm twice. I'm thirsty. I know. It's I'm like really classic. Thirsty. Get you in the pool room. Let you win the first couple of games. <laughs> then big. Then bet big. Because now you're cocky. Now you think you know. Now you think you're unstoppable. Now you think you're invincible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens to you? Oh, is this your ass? Here, have it. Have it. I'd like to know where my phone is. Anyways, so question number three. Here we go. Okay. Mwah. Oh, I better listen. Hi, guys. My name is Fraser Nagy. I'm a founder of a small startup based here in Toronto and Ottawa. Uh, I'm heading down to New York in a couple of weeks to go to a, a large conference around startups and innovation. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you think has been the real difference maker for why American VCs and investors are looking north uh, and why Toronto and Ottawa are punching well above their weight class in terms of job creation in the tech sector? Thank you so much. Didn't hear that question. So can somebody please come out here and tell me what it was or run it again? Welcome back. My guest in this segment is... Hi, guys. My name is Fraser Nagy. I'm a founder of a small startup based here in Toronto and Ottawa. Uh, I'm heading down to New York in a couple of weeks to go to a, a large conference around startups and innovation. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you think has been the real difference maker for why American VCs and investors are looking north uh, and why Toronto and Ottawa are punching well above their weight class in terms of job creation in the tech sector. Thank you so much. Okay, that's a interesting question. The question is why, in a nutshell, why are Canadian, why are U.S. tech companies heading north to raise money and go public in Canada, and why are Toronto and Ottawa punching above their weight class in terms of job creation in the tech sector? So those are two questions. Really. So the first question, why do American tech companies come to Canada to raise capital and go public? I think that the main reason for that is because in the United States, most companies that are technology oriented, you don't go public until you've got eight quarters of double digit Q on Q growth and you're looking at a billion dollar valuation. Easier to go public here. You can go public here and you can raise much less money and you will find an audience. So you can raise five million bucks here and go public. You can't over there. Well, you can, but you don't, you're not taken seriously. So what are you saying? I'm saying the reason <laughs> is okay, I got it. that the, the metrics are so it. much lower in Canada. So if you consider that the United States, everything is 10 times bigger in the United States. Population, market size, yeah, capital yeah, yeah, availability, yeah. and the minimum threshold to go public on a NASDAQ or an NYSE is you got to be almost these days at least a couple of hundred million bucks. So you're also going to get raped, positively raped by venture capital. Ouch. I call it vulture capital because typically, or the, or the most misleading term of all, angel finance. Right. I'm going to get angel finance. Oh, really? I'm an angel. Here, right. you turn around, bend over. I'm going to stick this thing up your nose with no uh, lubricant, and uh, I'm going to take better than 50% of your company for a very small piece of cash. That's what angels generally do. Then the vultures come along and the vultures say, well, okay, that guy's got 50% for, call it 250K in. Like if you want to see egregious vulture capitalism, watch, uh, what's the show called? Shark Tank? Yeah. Or uh, what's the Canadian version? Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den. Those guys, Somebody's got a good idea. There's it's like, Bay hey, Street we'll take 90% of Listen, your deal for Wecker no money Weckerly in. Mike Weckerly was on that show, wasn't he? Mike Weckerly? Yeah. yeah. He sure was. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but a, you might say, stage thing. usually business people do things because it's advantageous to do it. So when you say, why are they coming here or why is this happening? It's because it's advantageous to them to do it for all the reasons you said. I'm There's just, Ed's response. I'm just summing Second it up. Second part of that summing question, why is Toronto and Ottawa area and everything in between, especially Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, punching above their weight class in I terms of I wouldn't say Kitchener-Waterloo is between us and Ottawa. No, but it's in Ontario, yeah, southern but, Ontario. Yeah, that's all you said. You We're said. not talking about okay. geography, Ed. Okay. We're talking about why right. Ontario is 
putting out so much technical I think, you know what? power. I, I think it has something to do with Ottawa. I think... How many universities are there in a, call it, 600-mile radius of Toronto in Canada? Twelve. There's 12 universities in a 600-mile really, really? radius of Toronto. So that's to, from Concordia to, to Western to uh, Carleton to, um, you know, U of T, yeah. uh, Queens, thank you. Uh, there's there's just so much, there's such a concentrated technical but educational you, you, pool here. University of Waterloo is unbelievable. But it applies right, to, right. But there's, there's right. action going on over there. Right. So the point is that, my point is that since BlackBerry and Nortel right. financed the you know, the, the development of these large campuses on these universities that are technologically focused, right. people look north because down south, everybody who wants to, you know, you want to, if you're a serious engineer in computer science down there, you're looking at seven figures just to, uh, you know, just for entry level position. And so for really? a VC, like, for a startup. Like mail room or something like that? It's a computer engineer. Entry level okay. position. Okay. They don't start with the mail room. You don't have a mail room until you're quite a large corporation. You want computer engineers if you're rolling out a new technology, right? So that's that's the answer to that in a very long-winded fashion. Do you have anything to add to that, Edward? Do you think I did a good job? Yeah, I think yeah. I screwed it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm right. I think the bottom line is at least we got something going on. <laughs> like, in other words, oh, that's so refreshing. Thank you, Ed. You're right. Thank you. you. Know, at you least we got something going on is the right answer. <laughs> you guess what else is there? I mean, look. Wow. Toronto is a very pro. Like, you just got to go to Yorkville, hang out there for a weekend. Yeah. And, you know, okay. You know, it's nice. All right. Let's go talk to. Uh, Could be worse. Let's go talk to the audience now. I think we should. Okay. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work backwards. You guys have good intro, but just can't give the best sexual jokes. It seems very unlikely. And after three weeks, it's getting harder by the day. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. Cast ready. Not appreciating our sexual innuendos. Okay. If you're offended okay. by that, I'm fuck off. No, just kidding. <laughs> Let's offend you even more. I don't want to, you know what? I don't want to offend anybody. No? You know. I don't mind offending. I, 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 you know, if you're offended by offhand remarks that are clearly intended as humor, that have no malice in them whatsoever, and really are not guided towards anything except just right. juvenile yeah. delinquency sense of humor, then uh, you're free to, you know, go elsewhere. I mean, we're just trying to enjoy ourselves here. We don't get paid for this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, everybody probably has the right to have their own prejudices and biases. And sure. And things sure. bother them. Like, if for you're instance, sensitive, you, you know, know some, people, some, sensitive people some people, when they see a rubber snake, it drives them nuts, right? A rubber snake? Yeah. Where would they see that, Ed? <laughs> no, <laughs> What's I'm so saying, funny about a rubber no, snake? No, no, you know, like, some, like, let's say you take a rubber snake and you put it on someone's seat. Would they least expect Oh, it. and Cast Ready, the same guy who was just complaining about our choice of sexual innuendo, says, you guys just can't keep it together, hey? Cans like boobs, as if everyone didn't get that. Oh. No, we were talking that your can is a derriere, your keister, your bum. Okay? That's what we meant. Let's see, any other great remarks from the audience? CSC is the Wild West. They accept any company, Wild West. any clown. Wild West. Wild well, James West. Uh, okay, I'll take that. CSC is the Wild West. They accept any company, any clown. Now, I don't think that's just necessarily limited to the CSE. I mean, we've seen a bit of egregious sort of listing behavior on... Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say that the TSX is our, is our, uh, is our, is our absolute... Uh, you know, it's our it's our monument. It's our our, our, our pillar. It's our pillar of our, propriety. Our bastion of bastion of, of integrity. Of puissance. Exactly. Nothing ever goes wrong there. TSX Venture. Yeah, things start to get you know a little what? dicey. Sometimes. You know, they should change the name to the TSX Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Ed, you know, they're in the building. You can make that suggestion uh, to them directly. Okay, she got it all now, wrong. Now, the CSE, the CSE is a whole other level of, uh, well, what, what are we going to, how are we going to categorize that, Ed? Whole other level of uh, laissez-faire, let's say. Yeah. Laissez-faire. <laughs> so the CSE really got started when... Uh, Supreme. Well, it started when the, the mining market went into the crapper. Yeah. And 
Even the, the TSX venture listed companies could no longer raise capital to support the listing fees of being on the TSX venture. That's when the CSE really got up ahead of steam because you could list on the CSE for 50 grand, whereas on the TSX venture, minimum yeah. annual yeah. listing maintaining fees are what, John? What would you say? <laughs> what, 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 what's up, John? I, I'm in. Like, what about a quarter of a million bucks a year? You, you need a couple. You need a, to be on there. You need at least a hundred, right? One hundred and fifty to TSXV. So three times. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. So so there you have it. Uh, Anne is saying thanks for Juju James. Yeah. Thank thank me. Boy, let's just say that Mike. <laughs> Can is still smart yeah, yeah, from yeah, that yeah. one. Jack be nimble, Jack oh, be quick. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know the, the thing is, you know, like you, you, discipline. I like, I like to sprinkle my... Discipline? Yeah, Mr. Discipline. <laughs> Just spraying discipline here, there, yeah, and everywhere. You know, sprinkle a little discipline right. here. Sprinkle a little discipline. Okay. Yeah. All right, I anyway, so Johnny... <laughs> There's a guy named Johnny here. Johnny, Johnny, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us today. He says, uh, Cannabis Technologies is a good gamble. He says, like buying a lottery ticket. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. There's a, there's a guy who's thinking outside the box. Uh, yeah. You know what? Okay, X Jester X, he's always got a good comment. He's got something to say about the acreage holdings thing. Also, in defense of, oh, he's got more than one, so uh -huh. I'm going backwards, but he says, in defense uh -huh. of Acreage Holdings, let's not forget MedRelief was one of the worst performing IPOs of all time, falling 22% to $7.40 on the opening day, going on to be acquired at $29.44 a share. Okay, so that's a good, that's an yeah, excellent yeah, point. Yeah. Just because one guy controls 87% right, of the votes, right. just because... But just at the, on the surface, it smacks of... Mm. Self-interest. In a the most okay, but yeah, I don't want yeah, yeah, I don't want to yeah, go on yeah, about. Yeah. No, they, I don't want to go know, on about. Look, look, look at look at. I don't want to be holier than thou. I'm, you know, you if know. you look closely enough, hard to believe you, but you might find some flaws. Like it's <laughs> well, actually, Ed, tomorrow on the show, tomorrow on the show. So yeah. Ben Smith, yeah. hopefully Dmitry Zaitsev, if yeah. I can talk. And to I'm going right, to be here. And you and I are going to gather around this table, and tonight I'm going to ask everybody to download the listing statement for Acreage Holdings, and tomorrow oh, we're going to have a conversation. I want everybody to pull out three of the most egregious features of the listing statement, and I want you to counter that with three of the biggest positives to so, underwrite the or so to underscore does that mean the I can't valuation. Go and have a couple of drinks tonight. You can do whatever you want, Ed. Just want to say that tomorrow you're say, going to have some really okay. articulate and very sober guys. Let me moderate it. Let me moderate it. No, no, no. That's I'll me. I'm the oh, moderator. So you don't have to read anything. <laughs> this seat. See, yeah. there's only one over more, here. More bullshit here, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyways, so we're going to have uh, we're right. going to have some opinion about right. that, okay. and uh, we'll be interested to hear what that is. Friday night. You know what I think we should it's we Thursday should do? Night, Ed. Friday night's tomorrow oh, night. Damn. You thought you were going to go out and get on it, did you? Um, okay. Shuffle anyways. paper like they do on TV when they just, they, you know, they always do this and they go. Well, wow, this, is, this is how you should know when you're in the real news business. Topping tonight's eyewitness news, 16 alarm fire in Chiktawana, Tagawanda, 13 car pile up on the QEW. Sorry, Jesus. Anyways, um, so we had a conversation about mining today with uh, a gentleman from, uh, uh, it sounded like he was from... Australia or England. Starts with K, I believe. Adrian. Adrian Wathwell was here, and here's what he had to say. Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Adrian Rothwell, CEO of Core Mining Limited, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol K-O-R-E. Adrian, welcome. Thank you. Adrian, to be a mining guy these days is a, truly a labor of love, um, and, but you have been at it for 24 years, you were That's saying. That's right. Yeah. So it is a labor of love, and the five right. years... The most recent five years have been testing, for sure, uh -huh. in, the, in the gold sector. But you've managed to put together quite an assembly of assets, and they look sure. quite uh, quite promising from a uh, from a former mining uh, enthusiast perspective. Tell me about the uh, flagship projects and and the rest of them too. Sure. Uh, well, core uh, we just listed in the last week. Uh, symbol K O R E um, through a reverse takeover. And through that, we, uh, we have four projects of interest to us. 
Uh, we brought along two development stage projects in California, um, one of which uh, we acquired from Gold Corp. Uh, the other one is an old Royal Gold project, and we acquired that from Vista Gold. Uh, they're called the Imperial and Long Valley projects. Mm -hmm. um, through the reverse takeover, I referred to, we acquired two really good quality exploration projects in the Caribou region of BC as well. Uh, yeah, so they, those those projects we've actually done uh, some drilling on, mm -hmm. and we're awaiting results. Okay. Um, the most recent press release you had that you drilled 20, 25.7 meters, 1.3 grams per ton gold, and 11 meters of 2 grams per ton gold. And that was at your Gold Creek project in the Yukon Territory? No, that's in the oh. Caribou. Okay, that's in the sorry. Caribou, yeah. The, we, we also have some Yukon projects that came from the, uh, the incumbent uh, reverse takeover company, Eureka mm -hmm. Resources. Okay. Um, they're in the White Gold District. But yeah, what's interesting about the drilling we just completed at Gold Creek was really um, we'd spent the last eight, eight nine months uh, while doing the reverse takeover process going back for probably over 30 years of data and looking at soils and geochemical and geophysical anomalies and really mapping that out on that project. And one thing that we came away with, and historic drilling, I should say, as well, there was a drill program last year uh, by Eureka. Mm -hmm. um, what we came away with was about an eight and a half kilometer trend of uh, arsenic in soils. And we also found from last year's drilling and from the, the golden in soils and geophysical work that that was a really good indicator for where gold mineralization was. And so we mapped it out. We got our drill targets for this year. Um, and we stepped out 300 meters from where the drilling was last year to test this target and test this theory. And uh, so really excited to see the last two holes, three holes. Uh, but on the first hole, it basically confirmed that thesis, that the gold mineralization is there and the higher arsenic in soils is a great indicator for that. Um, and the arsenic's not, not high enough to be a problem, it's just, it's there as an sure. indicator. Sure. Okay, so for just for the sake of my audience has become less mineral focused. and yeah. focused. Yeah. So take me through the value proposition of a company like this mm -hmm. for an investor. If I was to say to an investor, they'd say, oh, you yeah, saw so you had a gold company on. How does that work relative to a cannabis investment? How would I explain that to them? Yeah, well, you know, I, I can't speak to what the value proposition is for cannabis stocks. Um, Light it up, you get it. Yeah, well, yeah, there, there you go. Uh, but really, for a gold stock, it's about two things. Um, discovery, which is generally more prevalent in the, those earlier stage exploration projects. Um, and it, this is why we like the Fraser Gold or FG Gold and Gold Creek projects in the Caribou as well. They're a little earlier stage, um, lots of discovery potential. And you know, it's, it, you, you just talk about the gold rush and, sure. and, and that is what, uh, what uh, creates value in this industry. Mm -hmm. The other one is looking for opportunities to acquire good quality assets for a, a low valuation and adding that, like our Imperial project for instance and Long Valley, um, these are projects that are ex very extensively studied, they're well known, um, they have, uh, Imperial has a historic feasibility study on it and uh, there's very little work that is, is necessary to get that into a mine. Uh, so what you're really looking for there is the re-rating of that valuation uh, to full value, which you will get once you are in operation or once you become a mine. Mm -hmm. um, now that's a, a longer lead time. Um, I, and I guess there's a third valuation is, is buying and selling. Mm -hmm. you know, so buying and selling these assets um, so, you know, if we're finding a buyer for Imperial, for instance, is, is one example of that. Okay. 
So great. So then, in terms of the gold market generally, um, you know, it's more or less been characterized by sideways movement on average over the mm. last five years. Mm. What is uh, and obviously the interest in gold stocks, exploration companies, is very much correlated to the price of gold generally. Mm -hmm. Now, when it starts to trade sideways, the price of gold can <coughs> jump up or jump down. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. what, at what point in the price of gold do you see that the interest will come back to gold on a sort of broad-based level across the investor spectrum? Well, first of all, uh, gold price, yes, it's been moving sideways within a pretty narrow band for the last three years, uh, almost. Um, there's still opportunities in that sector. And so we talked about the total volume of money may, may have not changed or probably decreased since cannabis and blockchain uh, has taken a lot of speculation capital out of that market. Uh, but there's still opportunities within that, within that sector. So, um, and, and that's based on discovery and, and exploration as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, in terms of where gold price is going um, and what would drive that, uh, you know, gold is, is very much inversely correlated with the U.S. dollar. So while we see a strong stock market and U.S. economy, uh, you're going to see gold really trundling along where it's, where it's at mm -hmm. right now. Um, and I guess that's the opportunity, too, from a long-term investor's yeah. perspective. Asset prices are cheap. Stock prices are cheap. Buy a position now that you, you know, you're not looking to flip in, the, in, in cannabis time, which would be like two weeks. You, you really, yeah, you really see, when you start seeing cracks in the U.S. economy or the world economy, for that matter, um, it's a good time to start investing in gold. Mm -hmm. and, and we think we're, we're starting to see that yeah. uh, in the U.S. Sure. And, uh, uh, you know, this is a time where you can rotate out of those stocks, earn some money, yeah. and invest in gold or gold stocks. Right. And gold stocks is a proxy for gold. Right. Do you see that, uh, I mean, I listened to a lot of the cryptocurrency arguments coming from uh, essentially what was a younger libertarian crowd yeah. who would have traditionally been the replacement generation for the gold bugs of yeah. of our generation and uh you know the the rhetoric is the same but they're proposing cryptocurrency is somehow superior to gold though it lacks gold's natural governing limitations such as you know the difficulty of extracting it and its scarcity Yes. Uh, we've certainly seen that cryptocurrencies, while maybe Bitcoin has a limit of 21 million in, the, in its totality, we can have 55 different versions of Bitcoin, Ripple, yeah. Ethereum, Ethereum, and it's yeah. essentially endless. Yes. So it's in many respects, it's even more pernicious than a US yeah. dollar situation, if you ask me. So that's why I'm glad mm -hmm. to see the cryptocurrencies kind of being put in their place setting the stage for when the next sort of global recession starts to manifest that people will just sort of recognize okay like cryptos meh, maybe not but gold yeah. definitely so it's, i think it's a great time yeah me too i mean gold's a physical asset yeah so that you can't uh, duplicate it uh and and you know, you've got to find it somewhere yeah. you know and you and can't delete it no you <laughs> cannot delete it and <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Well, uh, Adrian, tell you what, we're going to watch your gold or your drill programs with interest, and we'll come back to you in a quarter's time or so and see how you made out. Thanks so much yeah. for joining me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you know, there is going to be a day, Ed, when gold stocks are the thing to buy again. Yeah. When is that? Well, that's why, you know, if you, if you become an, uh, an adherent to uh, technical analysis... It, it happens when they start to move. Um, if they go up. No, but, but they will. Well, Unless they're going down. If they don't go up, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you know, and it's the yeah. first thing to tell you it's moving is you the know, price. you got to watch the price. You know what we haven't done at all today, Ed, and it's 419? Technical uh, analysis. So I'm going to start. I want to do, I, I want you to talk about the. Uh, S&P? No, I want you to talk about the nat price of natural gas oh, versus yeah, the natural, price of oil. Natural gas. Because there's been some real stellar moves Wild there. Wild moves. Why don't you pull up a couple of charts for us? I'll well, uh, 
What? Yeah, I can do that. UAGZ. Oh, you know what? I'm going to pull up the UGAZ and the DGAZ. Ooh, and explain what it is. And I'll explain what it is. And, and we'll, everybody will have a real good understanding of what's going on. Oh, I'm so excited. Here we go. I just can't hide it. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. I you know. know I want you. I want you. Slow down there, big fella. <laughs> okay, close all. All Here right. We go. Here we go. All right. So, okay, so you... In the meantime, in I'll rig out the audience <clears throat> with stories from uh, the trenches. Hey, I hear you uh, you, you took off to uh, Vegas last night. Is that right? You went to Vegas? When? There was a rumor going around that you... Went to Vegas? And you, you went on some game. You no. went down there for the night. No. No. It's not true, Ed. I I'm cloned not myself. I thought you did. Because there's I a picture floating around. Wait, wait. Yes. There. That's... Good God, I did go to Vegas. It must have been oh, sleep. I sleep flu. Dramatic proof, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Look at this guy. But look, he's a little more fleshier face the, uh, than I am, That's quite the say? outfit. You got some Vegas outfit for sure. a little sure. bit more corpulent than me, wouldn't you say? Uh, not, my, not much. A little fleshier of face, <laughs> wouldn't you say? What do you mean, not much? No. Boy, oh, boy. No, spin image. Oh, my God. Jesus. Hey, Zeus. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Let's uh, move right along here. I got to show you guys a couple of charts that you're going to just, you know, I, and, and the viewers probably already know natural gas and oil have had dramatic moves, and somebody believes that somebody. And we're not put talking on, wheat oil or hash oil. This is the oil that comes on, out yeah, of the ground or the ocean. So, so I'll just set it up this way. That, uh, Crude oil in the last five weeks dropped from about $75 a barrel to $55 a barrel. And at the same time, natural gas went from about 3 bucks, hit $4.90. That is a monster move, uh, to say the least. And, and then uh, natural gas dropped today, I think, from $4.90 yesterday. I think at one point it hit $3.97. So these are... These are just unbelievable moves. And there's a couple of vehicles here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, if you switch to my NDI, I've got both charts up side by side. You know, you know what? Okay, here we go. That's the... Okay. That's... Okay. No, that's not it. You know what? This drives me nuts. Like, there's got to be a better way. Look. What do we got up there, Ed? VS, V3S, right. invert... Invert natural okay, gas. Okay, so so here we go. Yeah, but I don't have it up here to draw and, and I want no, to No, you're gonna look, do it old school. Okay, old school. Look at look at this. This is twenty five dollars. This is in September. It hit two dollars and eighty six cents yesterday. And that's an inverse, a triple levered. You're betting on natural gas going down. So if it went up, this is gonna go down big time. And look at it. This is now you wanna talk about you could have stepped in this morning and bought it. And anyway, it did, it did, re, it did uh, correct a bit, but not, you know. So, but what's the, uh, let's see, I'm going to pull this chart out to, so that's the three month. Let's look at the one year. So like, is this more like the this support is, level? I don't know what, is you know what? the norm that it's going to revert to? This is heroin. Is this, this is going to revert to the mean, Ed? No, no. The, the, it's the, not? These things get rebalanced every day. There's, There's no so chance of it reverting to the mean of the last year. You know, no, you know what? You, you really have to understand what you're doing here. This is not kid stuff. This is if not child's play? This is, if you really, really want to commit financial suicide, <laughs> you, you trade these things. This, this will give you all the action, and you're going to say, how come they don't go up? When the commodity, it, it, when everything looks right, they get rebalanced, and the percentages change. It's like a, it's like a game they keep changing the rules, but they don't tell you the rules until after you're in. Like it's it's wild. So this is an exchange probably. traded note. It's correct? an exchange traded thing, but it's triple triple levered, uh, and and it works something so like this. So are you saying the so covenants drops, of the note? If it drops from twelve to eight, right? Yes. The, the commodity had to drop a third of that, or go up a third for it to, it to drop three times. It moves three times what the commodity moves. So okay. if, so so hence. Look at this, twenty-four bucks to here, and then right. and is this the long one? And no. this is the that's a daily uh, though. Oh, oh, okay. that's one day. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll go three months on that, and we have the inverse. Yeah. Of so so look so look at this one was down here to fifty bucks, 
right? Yeah. And it, it yesterday it hit 270 or 260. So this is the triple two pro gas. Pr up gas. Yeah. Up, up gas. Yeah. If, if gas goes up, this goes up three times as fast. So look, we saw five times move, but look at this. Gas goes down 20% today. Look at this. From 250 to 110. Yeah. That's... Let's say you buy yourself, I'm just going to speculate here, buy myself a quarter million dollars worth. Yeah, I buy right at the high. I'll get blown out. I'll get moved on side tomorrow. Tomorrow you walk in, what do you got left? You got 110 grand. So oh. your quarter million becomes 110. So what were you thinking? Which of these do you buy? Well, look, look, right now, you know, it looks like, you know, natural... Like just looking at the charts, just for what they are. Uh, uh, but here, here's the point. Look at we had a small green candle on the up. This is how they get you. Small green candle on the up. Look at this. Look at the major red. So for what this one lost, this hardly gained at all. You Why know, is in that? other words, it's it's so they're called not rebalancing. It's rebalancing. So this note has been rebalanced for a different formula? They, they, they both rebalance because they keep setting it based on the price the night before. So like last night, they reset the thing to 250. So if this thing, if, if gas goes down 10%, this goes down 30%, but from 250. Not like the, the base always changes. So, you know, a 10% move is is a is a not the same drop. So if right. something goes from ten to nine. So you get that's, a, that's ten percent, one out of ten. Yep. But if it goes from nine to ten, that's eleven percent. Right. It, it's always different depending on your frame of reference. That's all. And so they play with, play this game, and that game is mind boggling. You really want to short these things because they all always end up. But this is going short. I thought. Well, the, well, one's you long, go short one's short. short. One short, one long, one one okay. is long. Yeah, okay. you want to go short to short, short to short, or short to long. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it, it, are you it, confused? I'm confused. All I can say, look, at somebody jerked or uh, natural gas jumped. Okay. okay, all right, enough said. No, okay, so that's. I good. gotta have a glass of water. Okay, tell you what. Now I want to look at Cantrust because Cantrust, I think, was the best performer of the day among the cannabis complex. Right. Cannabis. Look at that green stick there that green candle started the day at 743 or i almost bought it i would have bought it except that the s p was doing this and so i was like oh if only the s p was not doing that i would have loaded up but i didn't because the s p was looking down then what happened the s p reversed trust took off and it actually and, and at one point was up 30 percent today because i don't have my phone with me 940 that's a big move. That's two bucks, isn't it? Two bucks. Buck, 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 buck. The two bucks, would that mean several chickens? Or is that two clucks? Two clucks would be two chickens. Two, oh, yeah. Two chicks would be two chickens two in the making. Two bucks would be a couple of deer in the forest. <laughs> That's right. Do a deer or a female deer. <sighs> okay. Anyway, people were saying they come for the humor, they stay for the music. Yeah, yeah. Wait till yeah. you wait till we start. Wait till we roll out the dancing. That's going to be a regular feature going forward here. We're just building the stage now. I'm a dancer. Okay, so so look, that, that is, look at this move. This is a dramatic move here. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, that's look at that. That's woo. Anyway, my buddy in in uh, Florida, Robin Ross. Yeah. He said to me, he said, Robin Ross. Robin's my buddy. Uh, I, I know talked Robin to him. Ross. Robin says, Robin Ross. Robin likes this company. He says. British guy? Uh, no, I wouldn't oh. say he's British. Okay. I'd say he's I know uh, a British. Robin he likes Ross he likes uh, Rolls Royces and uh, Ferraris. He's a bit of a character. Yeah. He's not. It, you never have to worry about Robin. Yeah, who Robin's do you know that doesn't like him. Rolls Royces and Ferraris? Uh, my dog's not too particular. Yeah, but, but, yeah. Animals don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, I'm, or chickens. Chickens don't care. Chickens oh, don't care. You think they're gonna say, hey, "I'm not shitting on this Rolls Royce like, seat"? Look at this. Watch no, this. No, chicken does care if it's crossing the street. It's like I'd rather be run over by a Rolls Royce yeah. than I would be yeah. Uh, yeah. like a Toyota. I said to a guy once, I said, if you were going down the road in, in your 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 top of the line Mercedes and there was a little critter walking across, would you swerve or just? He said, I'd "Rather not answer that question." <laughs> well, he's honest. Well, okay. So trust tomorrow. Buy what? 
Is it going to keep going up, Ed? What's the news? It went up on financials. I'm not, you know, I'm not too bullish on the whole okay, thing. But let's see what SPX is telling looks, us about It looks tomorrow. higher. looks higher. I, I, I'll say it's going higher. Here's SPX one year. Wow. There's wow, the reverse. That, you know so let's, let's look intraday, though. Ooh, that's a pretty solid recovery day. Okay, you know what? Can, can, I really need to see like a three-month. All right. The one day doesn't tell you anything? Well, you know what? I want to see, because this is such a... Uh, uh, this was such a cleansing that you have to look at you have to look at things in context of a little bit bigger picture. I think, but what's really important is this day, this day, yesterday, almost. I think it pretty well took out the. And it, I wanted to see over twenty seven ten. I never got it. Today it it went there clearly filled that gap and got into a real. And then look at this thing just come back. That was a very I think a very positive day. Whoa. And that, you know what I think? I what? think now we're moving right along. Moving right along. Anyway, uh, I'm I wanted very, to say hello. very happy on that close on the S&P today. That was a great candle. Maxed out. Hi, Maxed out. Says the chicken crossed the road to get away from Ed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Bastard. Yeah. Uh, Nick, Nickel, Nickla, Nichols, Nichols, et cetera, Nichols says, I think dimes. a lot of people are long on Cantrust. That's why we didn't see a sell-off. That's a good point. Well, uh, it's all, you know, perspective. See. People are making requests for Ed t-shirts. There you go. There yeah. you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Dancing on Fridays is being requested. Dance, James, dance. <laughs> yeah, they, they you want know us what? to bust I, I was never a great dancer, uh, you know. Oh, Fre come on, Ed. Fred I saw Astaire. you dancing the other day. It was quite you know, miraculous. It just seems a bit silly to me. Like, for instance... You know, you calling me silly? Yeah. You saying that dancing silly, yo? Hey, you packing? You pack? <laughs> That's the reaction I like to get. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. You pull down your yeah, no, whatever. Pull up, pull up, pull hey, up. Anyway, pull, so pull look, look, look. Like I think it's time to shut her down here, James. Hey, you know what, Ed? It's four thirty. Time to go. Everybody, thanks very much for Is joining. Don't forget here? to put in your questions. At any time during the show, we're going to be way more focused on answering your questions and saying hello to you, the audience, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're the reason we're doing this. Yeah, we're you guys. You, you, it's the we, only reason. We think you need more of us in your life. Well, and we need more of you because otherwise, okay. what you know would what? we be doing? That's it. Ed's I out of here. Say, I want to say goodbye Sayonara. to all of you. All right, Ed, are you on the wagon tonight? No, sir. Thank okay, you. we're going to party. Woohoo! Thank you, Terry.